Dr. Jerome Curtis saves the first Hannah from a crystal enclosure that trapped her when she touched the fracture. Then he tries to save the second Hannah from being whisked away for experimentation. And then rebels show up. I don't know what's going on. Do you know what's going on? Maybe somebody knows what's going on. We're going to try and figure out what's going on in Antarctica number nine from Image Comics. See you in three. And welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Antarctica number nine from Image Comics. And in this issue, action gets turned up when Jerome saves the first Hannah from the fracture when the second Hannah is removed for experimentation. But before we get started, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Let us know how we're doing. Hit that bell for notification and make sure you stay tuned to the end for the rating and score. Let's talk about the credits. Antarctica number nine is written by Simon Burks who we know from on the indie scene from Blue Fox Comics. Art is by Willie Roberts. Color is also by Willie Roberts. Same thing with the cover. And letters by Lyndon White. Let's recap what happened in the prior issue and see if we can figure out what's going on in this issue. In the prior issue, we learned that one or more Hannahs from across the multiverse have been kidnapped and placed in some sort of experimentation room where they are tested I don't know, done something with them? I, eh, I don't know. But what happens is the one Hannah who's in a construct or a room that's made to look like her house escapes. She manages to make her way through the uh, facility looking for a way out, but she's captured. And then Simons makes her touch the fracture. And at the very last minute before Jerome can stop it, the Hannah's contact with the fracture encases her in a crystal-like cocoon, if you will. What does any of that mean? I have no idea. So now let's pick up what's going on with is this issue. Simons is knocked out. Bob is knocked out. Jerome gets help for the Hannah that's now encased in this crystalline structure to find out if she's still alive. And the answer is yes. And then he initiates basically a call for help to a group of, I don't know what you would call them, rebels? People who know what the scientists at the station are doing and are opposed to it and want to stop it. People that he made contact with prior to coming to the base. He sends out a distress signal. They're coming to help him. So he tries to find a hiding place for him and the crystalline encased Hannah. Meanwhile, he receives word that Simons has come to. She kills Bob Williams to take over control of the base and she moves to take the second Hannah which is in a stasis chamber and is going to move her off to do something I don't know what Jerome figure, sees through the security cameras that Simons has taken the second Hannah he kills all the lights and puts on night vision goggles and grabs a gun and starts killing the guards to try and get to ha the second Hannah before it's too late Simon surprises him, shoots him he gets away mangled uh, but alive when his rebel mercenary I don't know who they are friends show up and they say don't die on us we're gonna go save the Hannah's if you still survive when we get back we're gonna get you medical aid and that's where we left it okay so here's this here's the big tidbit the big in informational factoid that's gonna help at least clarify where we are we know this is 15 years prior to the previous arc, and then we know that because it's in the notes page or the, the uh, prologue page, if you will. What we find out through the course of dialogue that's an interesting tidbit is that Jerome, where he is right now, is one of the alternate Earths. He's not on his Earth. So that kind of clarifies where this is in the whole range of the arc and the story, meaning that adult Hannah, who we met in the first arc, her father disappeared. So even though we now know that this is where he disappeared to, he wasn't in Antarctica and just didn't come home. He's in the alternate Earth Antarctica. And so that's why he hasn't come home. And he's on the alternate Earth Antarctica that is, I'm not sure which one it is. It might be the one that's overpopulated, maybe. I'm not sure, we don't know. We're given very little information to kind of ground you in time and place and universes. And so that's where we are. Let's talk about what we liked about Antarctica. There's a lot of fast-paced tension, dramatic action that's going on, lots of 
people running around through hallways with night vision goggles, shooting at each other, ducking, uh, fleeing, shooting, uh, evading, punching, kicking, all kinds of things where it's, it's not an extra action romp per se, but there's a lot of drama, dramatic tension through the, through, uh, through the action where you just want people to stay alive. You want the good guy, Jerome, presumably is a good guy. You want him to stay alive. And the pacing and the energy of the issue keeps the tension high. That's good. That at least keeps you engaged. That keeps you um, visually focused on what's happening in the moment in each panel. And it looks like we're eventually moving towards some kind of resolution to whatever happened 15 years ago, which is when the story takes place compared to the first arc. What do we like about the issue? Well, if it wasn't clear, I have no idea what the hell is going on. Simon Burks, we like you. We like the stories you come up with. You're imaginative, but gosh almighty, man, you've got to keep things straight. At least put a caption box saying, this is where we are. This is that where we are on. This is what year it is. Something, because you're just having the story flow in a sequence of events, but you and you have no idea why there are multiple Hannahs. What do the Hannahs have to do with anything? Why, why is Jerome experimenting on his daughter, or at least a version of his daughter, or one of several versions of his daughter? What, what, what is it? I don't even know what's happening. We're in the second arc, and I have no idea what's going on. That's not a good thing. Issue nine, I still have no idea what's going on. At best, we know that there is a fracture or a fissure in Antarctica, and that fracture connects multiple Earths to each other. If you go through the fracture, you wind up in another Earth. And we know that multiple Earths are now coming into ours, or they're trying to infringe on ours, for, at least in one case, due to overpopulation and a lack of resources. But that's about all we know. We don't know why Jerome is on an alternate Earth, how he got there, or what he's trying to accomplish with exp is this experimentation, and why he's doing it with little girls who are alternate universe versions of his daughter. What is Simon's after? What is, what is I, I don't know what's going on. I have no idea what's going on. I'm trying, really trying very hard. I have no idea what's going on, and that's bad. At issue nine, that's really bad. But we're going to keep going. We're going to try. Eventually, we're going to trust Simon Burks to make sense of it all, sense of it all, and bring it all together. Let's talk about the art. Willie Roberts is doing a good to great job with this uh, comic. We've seen his work before. This is the best we've seen. Uh, the the character the character um, figure work. The lines, the pencils, the inks, the colors, it all comes together. It feels like a cinematic sci-fi story. You, you could very easily see how this could be adapted into a Netflix series or something on sci-fi or some kind of live action platform. Don't know which, don't know if that'll ever happen, but we don't know this. The script's got to be straightened out, that's for sure. But visually speaking, it looks great. So the costumes are original. The settings look authentic. The uh, camera angles and the panels, the way they're kind of visualized, make everything as dramatic as possible. And that really works. It's great art all the way around from Willie Roberts. Final thoughts. What do we think about Antarctica number nine? Great action, great pacing. The dialogue is generally on point. And visually speaking, from an artistic point of view, it looks great. So all those factors work in. The plot is confusing as heck, and I don't know how anybody's keeping track of it. I don't know how the writer's keeping track of it because I don't know anything about what's going on. So either the story's in the writer's head and it's not getting out, or the story's just getting made up as it goes along. I don't know which, but it, it's, a, it's a struggle. And we're trying, we're trying to be fair, we're trying to give it a, a, an even shake, but at this point, it's weird that we don't know what's going on or why anything is happening or even what's happening at all. And that's the downer. Therefore, we're going to give Antarctica number nine a, oh, just because of the plot, we're going to have to give it a six out of 10. There's the review. If you like more reviews just like this one, thank you for joining us and stay tuned through the outro for the next one.